I'm Johnny for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews, and I'm here to talk to you about huge ch changes coming down the road for, the, for Ford. These huge changes are being made because of a huge change in direction. Just this past week, Jim Farley said, you know what, we're slowing down on converting everything to EV, and we're going to be focusing more on hybrids. So it's official. Ford is going down the Toyota route. Uh, so Ford is going to be more like Toyota here. And we're going to have, you know, whether it's your Ranger, your Ford Bronco, your Ford Maverick, it's going to be a whole lot more like Toyota's vision. And what's Toyota's vision? And that's actually to have a lot of hybrids. So great news. Hybrids are selling incredibly well. EVs, when they're not really inexpensive, when they're not, you know, very right priced, people don't want to spend other than your, your small percentage. The general public does, is not willing to spend a whole lot more to have an EV just because it handles better and accelerates better and is more comfortable. Look at that F-150 sales, folks. They've had to cut production down by about a third because people don't want to spend more just to have Ferrari-like acceleration and great handling and great comfort. I've experienced all those things with F-150, but even I myself, a diehard Ford guy who's very open, I tested out the new electric product and what got me to sell my F-150 and see some of the worst, see the worst depreciation I have ever seen. I bought that F-150 at 110 grand and I'm selling it at 76,800. Now dealers are asking more like 87,000 for my F-150 Lightning to 87,000 to 91,000. So not as much of a depreciation, but I've asked those prices before and I wasn't selling. So slowly I went from you know, six, seven months ago asking 98,000 for my, my Lightning, all, which I paid 110 for all the way down to asking the low, low price of 79,900 or, and sorry, then I lowered it down again to 77,900 and I sold it at 76,800. So that's the story. EVs aren't as desirable as they were one year ago. Two years ago, they're the segment of vehicle that depreciated the least. When I ordered, it seemed like a very safe thing. I thought that I'd have very low cost of ownership and I have extremely high mind brain blowing, bra you know, <sighs> Ne never would have I thought I to sell my Lightning after one, one year to get back on the channel, a new and exciting product. I never thought I'd have to lose $46,000. So Ford, being a smart company, having, a, I think, a smart CEO, a wise CEO, you've got to, when you go down a planned route, but new data comes in that contradicts or doesn't fit in, with the data that had you originally create the decision, like originally Ford F-150 Lightning, they're like, oh, well, we're going to make, I think it was, then they publicly set from all the demand, they had like, what, 200, 250,000 orders come in. They're like, oh, we're going to double production. More orders came in. Oh, we're going to again double planned production. Oh, I think they ended up saying three times they're going to double production. Well, now they've cut it way back. Not as robust as they thought, but what is this going to do? It's going to bring us great plug-in vehicles. The Ford Ranger, the 2.3 liter is already plug in over in Europe. Our chances here in Canada, US and Mexico have skyrocketed in getting a plug-in Ranger. Why? Because Ford has to. Cafe rules, regulations right now make it that you need to be soon at 50 miles per gallon across your overall fleet. So if you still want to sell that V8 F-150, if you still want to sell, you know, 800,000 F-150s in either EcoBoost 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 or a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 making an average of more around 12 liters per 100 kilometers or a hybrid version making roughly 10.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Those are all way under 50 miles per gallon. If you still want to sell 800,000 of them per year and make a good profit, you need to sell a lot of either full electric vehicles, which aren't selling these days, or Toyota had the right recipe, a whole lot of hybrids. So very cool, folks. We're almost guaranteed now to get a 2.3 liter plug-in Ford Ranger. And guess what? You've got the same powertrain over in the Bronco. Woo, that's a little too fast, folks. So, sorry for that. We're almost certain to get this beautiful beast. Oh, 
Is that a wild track? Green Bronco? It's mine, but with a hard top. Thank you, Ford, for pushing. Uh, I know I made, I made the right color choice. Let us know in the comments what was your Ford Bronco color choice. And if you don't have one yet, what would you dream of having as a color on your Ford Bronco? I love yellow, cyber orange, they called it, but it was school bus yellow, folks. I wish they wouldn't have gotten rid of it. Hopefully they bring it back. But likely the 2.3 liter plug-in Ranger is coming down our way, but Ford has the same transmission and the same motor right here on the Bronco. So almost guaranteed to get a 2.3 liter Bronco with 28 miles of electric only driving range. That's incredible. That means roughly over 80% of the population can go to work and come home in all electric mode. They can plug back in, but the weekend on the weekend when you want to drive out to the trails. For me, the trails are roughly 250 miles away. And I, it takes me four to five hours to get to any trails. Well, other than my parents' uh, mountainous land lots of chances of getting very very stuck and very very scratched i've got about 100 hours of work if i want to clear enough branches to not ruin my paint job so that's why there haven't been there's only the ford raptor that dared go through part of their trails and they made a, a 2019 ford f-150 raptor that i bought off road with on the parents land but when i saw how much work there was there's even some electrical wires on the ground big trees crossing lots of chainsaw work I took the off-roading to only certain sections and still completely bottomed out and good thing the Raptor has a huge front plate. Otherwise, I've destroyed the radiator and front bumper. So good on you, Raptor. You're an excellent, wonderful product. And so is the Bronco. We're on our third. We love them. This current Bronco, I want to keep this thing, pay it off and drive it into my retirement. But we'd probably get 28 miles of range. We'd probably get about an extra 75 to 100 pound feet of torque. So that's pretty impressive. It'd probably end up being the most, the torquiest version. Probably getting pretty darn close, if not 500, maybe even up to 500 pound feet of torque. That at least 430, I'd say plug in version, at least 430 pound feet of torque for the American market and should add about an extra 50, 60 horsepower. So. On premium, this makes, what, 300 horsepower, 270 horsepower on regular octane gas, so add 50 horsepower to that, and it's making about 330 pound-feet of torque, uh, we'll at least get to 400. We'll be somewhere between 4 and 500. If ever they add the, uh, make a plug-in 2.7, that'd be much further down the road. This could actually be really, really close, and I mean two years from now. <laughs> Maybe as soon as one year. Well, continuing with the Ford Bronco, nose, uh, Ford Bronco news, not nose. I've got a big one, but that's not what we're talking about. Made fun of myself. Have to take a sip here and clear the throat. But you've got the Bronco Sport. This will be going hybrid and probably for its new model, 2025, we're not only going to get a bigger infotainment screen, we're almost certainly going to get an all-wheel drive hybrid version. And that's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be as it is on the Ford Escape. So you can look at that hybrid being added to the 2.5 liter. Very reliable. I talked covered it at the beginning of the live, but Ford's ECVT transmissions were made back in the day with Toyota. They've changed. They've been modified since then, but it's a very, very reliable transmission. We're going to see that in the Ford Maverick. We're going to see it in the Ford Escapes. People are going to love over the 10, 20 year time period, they're gonna love their ECVT transmission. This isn't a little, you know, rubber belt driven, unreliable, dangerously unreliable version like many manufacturers have produced. So Bronco Sport will have a 2.5 liter Atkinson cycle, four cylinder hybrid drivetrain. That's gonna be happening. And while we're on the notes, well, let's talk about it. The Ford Maverick. The Ford Maverick is almost certainly going to be coming out with an all-wheel drive hybrid for 2025. Not plug-in. That'll be a little further down the road, almost certainly. But an all-wheel drive plug-in. And I think a lot of people have really been waiting for that. This is from Insider Talk. So please encourage us here. Help us out. Give us a like a share, share this information and subscribe and please turn the bell notifications on to help support this small family sharing both um, information that anyone can get as well as insider information with you all. 
Now, the Ford Explorer and Lincoln Aviator, their full EV versions are getting pushed down the road, but their hybrid versions are much more likely to come out. Very likely in 2025 with the model year refresh. So the current gen models also share powertrains with the Ford Ranger and Ford Bronco. So what could we likely get? A 2.3 liter plug-in Ford Explorer and a plug-in Lincoln Aviator based on the 2.3 liter. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, it'd be great though for the Aviator and Explorer instead of a four, uh, instead of let's say a 14.4 kilowatt battery like they have over on the Escape. These are bigger vehicles. So is the Ford Ranger and Ford Bronco. For us, it'd be great if we got a little bit bigger of a battery, but considering over going back to the Ranger, considering that currently there's 28 miles of electric range, that's sounding a lot like the uh, essentially the same battery that's in the the Ford Escape. And of course, when you scale up, when you have economies of scale, meaning you spend money getting a whole lot of something, you get a better price on the product. You know, whether you're buying 10,000 or 1 million batteries from a company, they'll get you get a better price. You get the economies of scale. So these are the vehicles that we can see some major changes. Uh, traditional hybrid on this maybe a plug-in but we might have to wait a little longer ford has a tradition of bringing out the hybrid versions first and then you know a, a year or two later bringing out the plug-in versions in the case of the a bit longer because it came out in 2021 and we're a year or two away so either 2025 or 2026 worst case scenario 2027 for a plug-in bronco I know there's the major refresh could be as late as 2023, meaning yes, uh, I'll, I'll say I could be completely wrong. My educated speculation could be completely wrong and we could end up only getting a plug-in Bronco come 2030, but that's risking having to pay out fines. If we're going to be selling less producing and selling far less fully electric lightnings and less Mach-E's unless they take the big hit and continue to lose tons of money on them, they need to sell a lot of these plugins. And I think plugins, instead of plugins, need to have much better total fuel economy, mile per gallon ratings than they're currently being given by the government. Because for most people, uh, over 80% of the time that they drive their plug in Escape or plug in Ford Ranger or plug in Ford Maverick a few more years down the road, it's going to be an all electric vehicle except for when you do want to do that long haul for your winter and summer vacation. But honestly, who can afford to go out and have two vacations in the year? Most of us are lucky if we can get away and save up for just one vacation. Food and housing have become so unbelievably expensive because we're not getting upset enough, folks, about money printing. Money printing is a huge culprit. It's what causes everything to cost more. Your money is worth less when they print it out like crazy. Look at why is Bit why does Bitcoin have a certain value? Compare Bitcoin value to coins that have essentially unlimited supply and those with unlimited supply are not even worth a penny. Whereas Bitcoin is worth a ton per token, they are limited. When Broncos first came out, worth a whole lot more than what they are now because they were so darn limited. Ford Explorer and Lincoln Aviator likely getting though that also that 2.3 liter plug-in technology. Now there's even talk that the Ford Mustang could even be offered electric. And this is gonna be upset so many people if they go down this road. Think of how many people are upset with just the Mach-E using the Mustang name. I think they need to drop the Mustang name from it and just call it the Mach-E and make a whole lot more people, a lot more Mustang fans happier but we'll have to wait and see i'd love to see a plug-in f150 i'd love to go to work on 50 all electric have it essentially in my area electricity is very inexpensive i'd love to go to work essentially my week will cost me about eight dollars in electricity whoop de doo in, instead of a hundred a hundred and ten dollars in fuel on a truck i'll spend about eight dollars in electricity a tenth i'd love that P ford please
please come out later. Yeah, push even back another year. Instead of 2026 for Gen 2 Lightning technology, focus on bringing us a plug-in in F-150. That will be awesome. So we're wrapping up this episode. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this information with anyone that either doesn't like Ford. Maybe this is going to change their opinion on Ford. Or if they're Ford fans, this is need-to-know Ford information. I'm your one of your Ford guys, uh, Tim, over at Long Ford, um, Long MacArthur Ford, fantastic channel that is definitely should definitely be one of your Ford guys as well. Thank you for watching, folks. Now, if you're watching the live, stay tuned because we've got more information coming out. We're going to be talking about some changes to the Ford Bronco coming and why those changes are going to happen. They're actually going to happen because of you know kind of really bad sales uh so you know they're not doomed the ford bronco isn't going to go away from really 